Time now for 15 Minutes of Faith, practical application of God's timeless truth for today. A ministry of Harvest Baptist Church in Bay City, Michigan, where we glorify God, live His purpose, and love people well. So let's get growing with 15 Minutes of Faith. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of 15 Minutes of Faith. I'm your host, Pastor Jeremy Byler of Harvest Baptist Church in Bay City, Michigan. And today we're diving into a topic that's often surrounded by some confusion, some speculation, and just a general misunderstanding. Today we're going to look at common misconceptions about Christianity. So whether you're a seasoned believer, new to the faith, or just curious, today we hope to shed some light on some of the misconceptions and stereotypes that often cloud the understanding of Christianity and, tragically, prevent some from coming to salvation through Jesus Christ. You see, oftentimes people will reject the call of salvation, not necessarily because of God, but sometimes it's because of people, or maybe it is some misconception that they might have of what they think, well, in the bottom form of what they think church is or what they think Christianity is. And boy, that's a shame that they would reject the free gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, and really the opportunity to live the life God has intended you to live when he created you and the purpose he has for each and every one of us and just rejecting it on a basic misunderstanding or a misconception about Christianity. So let's dive in and let's take a look at some misconceptions about Christianity. Misconception number one, Christians have to be perfect. And it's one of the most widespread misconceptions is the idea that Christians are supposed to be perfect. However, the Bible itself acknowledges that that is not the case. In fact, the book of Romans chapter three tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Earlier in the chapter, it says, for there is none righteous, no, not one. See, it's not about perfection, but it's about acknowledging our imperfection and seeking God's forgiveness and transformation. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And again, being Christianity is not about being perfect, perceiving ourselves as perfect, and as a matter of fact, it's about continuously uh, improving upon our imperfections. It says, search my heart, O God, and see if there be any wicked way in me. And a lot of times we're doing that time of reflection, coming to the Lord humbly and asking him to reveal those things in our life that set us back, that are besetting us, or that are really imperfect or areas where we need to improve. No, Christians are not perfect by any means. I've heard people say this. Well, you know, there's some things I need to get straight in my life uh, before I start coming to church. And that'd be no different than saying, well, I need to get myself healthy before I go to the hospital. I need to cure this wound before I go see the doctor. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Nor does it make any sense when it comes to Christianity and coming to the house of the Lord. No, we are not perfect, nor do you have to be perfect. Misconception number two, Christianity is just a set of rules. Many people view Christianity as a strict set of rules and regulations. But here in the Bible, Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 22 that he emphasizes a relationship with God and others. Again, he says we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Are there commandments in the Bible? Most certainly. But you know, it's not about following the rules. Unfortunately, there are many who are very knowledgeable in the Bible and know what the rules say, uh, but they're missing out on one of the greatest opportunities to have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, there's a ditch on both sides. There are some that look at Christianity and the Bible and say, rules, 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 uh, follow, follow, follow. And there are those on the other side that say, you know what, uh, we're in the age of grace. There are no rules. It's just love, love, love. Uh, neither are correct. We're to find the middle of the road and have that idea of understanding of having uh, the rules or the boundaries or the commandments that God has given us to help us walk circumspectly or to walk an upright life. Uh, to help us find those imperfections and to improve upon them. 
but really it's a means to an end to continue to have a loving, walking, lasting relationship with our Heavenly Father. And that's what it's all about, is about that relationship. You'll hear that a lot, and sometimes people shirk at the idea of it's not a religion, it's a relationship. Religion has its place. It's a purpose, and it's a setting so that we can be involved in that relationship. Let's take a look at uh, a church service at Harvest Baptist Church, for example. Uh, We have singing. Uh, Singing is not just something that we do because that's what uh, you do. Now, the Bible says that when we come together, we're to admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing is a way of worshiping the Lord, and we're to do that. Singing is not just uh, to kill time so the pastor doesn't have to preach as long. No, singing is really a way of worshiping God, singing out to him, singing his praises, and preparing your heart to to be ready to receive uh, the word of the Lord. So our church service has uh, a time of singing. Our church service has a time of prayer. And our church service has the preaching of the word of God. That That's in aspects of what you would view as religion is coming together into the house of the Lord for that purpose. The book of Hebrews talks about not forsaking uh, your, of the assembly of yourselves together. It's talking about coming together in the house of the Lord in a way God is not the author of confusion. God says, let everything be done decently and in order. And there's an order of service. And it's all conducive to worship our Heavenly Father and to increase our love for him and to improve our relationship with him. So no, Christianity is not just a set of rules, although there are very well-meaning Christians that see it just as that. So again, neither are correct. It's about having a relationship and those structures are in place to guide us into that relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Misconception number three, Christianity is intolerant. Spend much time uh, watching the news or spending time on social media, you will hear that uh, sooner or later, that Christianity is intolerant. However, Jesus welcomed everyone, including sinners and outcasts, and his message is one of redemption and salvation for all who believe. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, Jesus says, I will in no wise cast you out. No, it is not intolerant. Now, we do stand against sin according to the Bible. Uh, We are to do that because that is what God has commanded us to do. Now, again, the world has taken that word and just us taking that stand against sin as some form of intolerance, that if you don't approve of or even uh, love the sin that I commit, then you are being intolerant. That is not the case. There are many people that I love very dearly that are involved in particular sins in their lives uh, that the Bible does not agree with. But you know what? There's sin in my life that the Bible does not agree with, that I need to get right and I need to take care of. But God loves me anyways, and I am to follow that example, and I love them anyways. It does not mean I am intolerant. It just means that I am trying to live in accordance to God and his word as I improve my relationship with him. Which brings us to the next misconception, is that Christians are hypocrites. A lot of times... Uh, We hear that. You'll hear the individual say, well, you know, I'm not going to go to church because it's full of nothing but hypocrites. Have you ever gone to the gym and seen someone that is out of shape? Well, if that's the case, if you're going to follow that same mantra of you're not going to go to church because of hypocrites, you would best not go to the gym because of people that are out of shape. Okay, you best not go to a music concert because there may be some there that are not good musicians or maybe they don't even like the band that's playing. You know, again, we have this double standard when it comes to that. But that word hypocrite does not lend itself to someone that makes mistakes. The word hypocrite comes from a Greek word that means to wear a mask or to have the idea of being a play actor. And it's often claimed that Christians are hypocrites because they don't always live up to their beliefs, yet the Bible itself warns against hypocrisy. 
it warns against uh, presenting yourself as something that you are not. Does that exist in the church? Absolutely, it does. Uh, but we have Bible preaching where God talks about and warns against being a hypocrite. And it encourages humility. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You know, he that uh, exalteth himself shall be abased. That word means to be brought low. If you present yourself as a hypocrite, God is going to humble you. So God acknowledges and he doesn't uh, agree with hypocrisy either. But yet he shows up to church each and every time the doors are open and so should you. And again, all of us make mistakes. None of us are perfect. And all of us are there to try and work on where we're at in our relationship with the Lord. Moving on to the next misconception is this, that faith means blind belief. I remember when I first came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I thought I wanted to have what was blind belief. I thought I wanted to have so much faith that I could go out onto the expressway uh, in heavy traffic and walk with my eyes closed and that I could just trust that I would not be hit by a car because I had blind faith. But then I learned in the word of God that the Bible says, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God, and that I would be tempting God in doing so in some kind of silly or foolish act and walking out in the midst of traffic. That is not wise. No, faith does not mean blind belief. Faith in Christianity is often misunderstood as this, but Really, it's rooted in evidence and trust. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So there is substance and evidence to our faith. Now, faith comes through obedience to the Lord. A lot of times we approach it, we will obey only when we understand that's not how it works. We understand as we obey, as we walk by faith and not by sight. And as we see these things and are tested in our faith, God will reveal them to us and we will see these things come to fruition and thus our faith grows. Furthermore, in 1 Peter 3.15, it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We're to be ready to give an account, to have an understanding, to be in the Word of God and understanding and continually learning the Word of God. Moving on, Christians are judgmental. Now again, you may come across some Christians that are in fact judgmental, but Jesus himself taught about not judging others hypocritically, but instead focusing on our own shortcomings. He says, judge not lest ye be judged, probably one of the most commonly quoted verses in the Bible, but the idea is that you are to have that self-reflection, that time of examining oneself and getting it taken care of so you can continue to help one another. The Bible talks about bearing one another's burdens, talks about if you uh, find someone in a fault, you are there that are spiritual, are to restore your brother, okay, in meekness. Again, the Bible tells us that we are not to judge others, but we are to judge ourselves and to continue working on that so that we can help others as well. And then finally, the last one we're going to look at here is misconception that God is distant and uninvolved. Some view God as a distant, uh, ambient being that is just kind of ambiguously out there. But the Bible paints a different picture when it comes to God. God is portrayed as a loving father who is intimately involved in our lives. The Bible in Matthew chapter 6 talks about, you know, he, he clothes the lilies of the field and that he feeds the fowls of the air. And how much more will he take care of you? And the Bible says, O ye of little faith, but it instructs for us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So again, those are some very common misconceptions we see here in Christianity. And as we close today, it's important to remember that addressing these misconceptions helps create a clearer understanding of Christianity in general. So instead of relying on assumption, let's kind of open ourselves to what the Bible says and according to what it means to be a Christian. And I really do thank you for joining us today on 15 Minutes of Faith. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like to cover in future episodes, please reach out and let us know. I'd love to answer your questions and help you grow in the faith. Because remember, faith is a journey, and it's okay to have questions along the way. 
So stay tuned for more discussions in our upcoming episodes. But until then, I would encourage you to stay faithful.